Hey, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Comport Secure and Beam Software's second webinar of our three-part series, where we will be discussing the importance of bulletproof backups for AWS and Azure environments. Today's webinar is a happy hour webinar, so grab your beverage of choice, and remember, Comport Secure will be sending out DoorDash gift cards so that you can stay hydrated after the webinar, too. Presenting, you have myself, Hannah Coney, Comport Secure's Cloud Solution Specialist. We have Eric Krecker, Comport CTO, and Sean Simpson, Beam Software System Engineer. Today's agenda is focused around how Comport Secure and Beam enable your enable and allow you to protect data residing within AWS and Azure. We're going to review options to reduce your total AWS and Azure spend, increase security around the data being backed up, as well as how to recover data in the event of a disaster or human error from backups with a live demonstration from Sean. As we review these topics, please keep the questions coming. There is a questions box within GoToWebinar and we will review those at the end. So throw them in there. Um, our contact information will also be available at the end if you wanna reach out to have additional conversations. So Eric, we see organizations every day who have deployed or are preparing to migrate to public cloud environments. The impact this cloud adoption has had is significant in quite a few ways. Can you elaborate? Yeah. Thank you, Hannah. I appreciate it. Uh, as everybody knows, the uh, you know the public cloud has really transformed IT and the way IT does business. Uh, you know the, the concept of a data center today has, has changed so drastically. What we traditionally think of, of on-prem, you know, to be more uh, of a hybrid situation where you know there's some some applications, some infrastructure running on-prem. Maybe there's some running in a hosted environment and then there's some running also uh, out in the public cloud being you know either deployed in a traditional manner being deployed in containers or you know using some other method of like serverless things like that so th th this concept is ever evolving uh, public cloud technology is continuing to to innovate and becomes a challenge for us uh, as technologists to keep track of this environment, also to, to back it up and make sure that we have everything covered in the case of some sort of disaster. You know, one thing is true uh, though, is that hybrid cloud is here to stay for a very long time. Uh, there, there are some organizations that have tried to go completely out into the cloud, but you know, we, we believe that in whole, you know, in, in, in its entirety that most people are going to be, most organizations are going to be hybrid for a very long time. And you have to be able to, to plan for that and to be able to back up those types of environments adequately. And even though, you know, the, the concept and the boundaries of the data center have changed, it's important that we have sound uh, business practices, sound IT practices that incorporate all the things that we've done for years and years in a traditional data center setting with uh, you know, quality practices around security and compliance and particularly around backup and DR. Uh, a lot of times when I talk to customers, they, they feel like they're, if they're running some sort of SaaS application, let's say like Office 365, that they don't really need to, to back that up, that they're covered by the, you know, the SaaS operator, in that case, uh, Microsoft. And to a certain extent, that's true for very short periods of time, but their, their data is not being backed up. It's, it's still incumbent upon them to do all the things that we would normally do and to back up that environment uh, because the, the ability to recover from, let's say, you know, email being lost is limited within, within that platform. So using things like Beam, or, or the way to go, and it's always uh, incumbent upon the organization to keep that in mind that, uh, you know, all of those things that they're using around SharePoint you know, in the Office 63, Office 365 suite and email uh, are, are not being protected by, you know, the SaaS provider. So, you know, we as technologists, we always want to embrace new technology. We always want to leverage that to, to enable the business to be, to be more productive, to innovate, uh, to make more money, et cetera. But we also want to think about mitigating risk. We always need to be thinking about how, you know, what we're doing and where we're doing it uh, is a, a sound IT practice, and we're mitigating risk as much as possible. And so, in that in that sense, the three, two, one rule for backups still applies. Uh, we still need to to employ that in, in everything that we do for IT operations. And as I said, we also need to have a, a solid DR plan. 
A lot of folks also think that just replication, you know, is a sound backup policy. Uh, it can work in certain situations, but it's not really the best way to go about, uh, you know, quote unquote, backing up your data. And, and in my opinion, and this is the opinion of a lot of people that snapshots and replication alone are not really a solid policy for backup and disaster recovery. And the reasons for that are, are, are really apparent, right? There's a lot of vulnerabilities out there. Uh, and, and the fact that, you know, we're extending our data center, as I stated before, makes us a little bit more vulnerable than we did before, than, than we were before. You know, things like ransomware, which have been out there for a long time, continue to evolve. Uh, you'd think that maybe they'd be gone by, by now because they've been around for such a long time, but they're not. They're actually getting worse uh, and more, it becomes more onerous on, uh, on the organization. So, uh, and then there's things just like somebody hacking into an account somebody fish, sending a phishing email and getting credentials from, for somebody's account and they have a privileged account and then the possibility of them deleting some data is really high. And particularly around the public uh, cloud environment, uh, it's, it's even easier to delete things today than it was you know, back when we only had traditional uh, data centers to, to be concerned about. All of our stuff resides out in, the, out in the cloud. It's highly automated, so it's easier for somebody who has nefarious purposes to go in and delete a lot or all of our data. Uh, you know, I worked with a healthcare customer who uh, who had a ransomware attack, and they they uh, they called us frantically and said, "Hey, you know, we we've, we've been uh, hit by a ransomware attack, and we need to recover our data." And we we helped them. They had to go back 17 versions of, of uh, some of their data in order to recover. And luckily they had a policy that allowed them to go back that far. Uh, some customers don't, but keeping that, those sound principles in mind, as I said, is always, always a good thing. Uh, and so, you know, it ended well for them. They didn't have to pay uh, the ransom in order to get their data back, but they did have to go back 17 versions, which meant, which meant that they had a really large RPO. So they, they, they lost some of their data, but it wasn't, the worst thing in the world for them. If they had lost all their data, that would have been obviously very terrible and they would have had to start from scratch. But I did, we did work with a customer uh, who, who contacted us after they had a, a hacking incident. And, uh, and, and this customer unfortunately had most of their data deleted and it took weeks and weeks and weeks to get them back up and running just to a point where they could get back up and running. They didn't even have all of their data recovered from the, 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 the pre-hack. So, uh, just in closing, it's it's really important to to work with a tool uh, like Veeam, right? That can can back up all of your data. The the complexity, the environment that most customers are operating in today, most organizations are operating in today, with with physical machines and virtual machines, and containers. Some of it out in the cloud, some of it in in a, in a SaaS application that they're running. It's important to have a a really robust tool in order to to back that up and have a solid policy and then be able to recover if something does happen and recover quickly. So with that, Hannah, I'll turn it back over to you for the rest of the presentation. Awesome. Thank you, Eric. Now that we have uncovered some of the underlying items of public cloud, especially the most important point there that I think um, is should be one of the largest takeaways is that the data is your responsibility. I really want to review the services that Comport Secure can offer to help reduce your risk as you implement cloud and hybrid cloud strategies. These four pillars form Comport Secure, and the two we're most focused on today are Backup and DR as a Service. Backup and DR as a Service allow organizations to implement cost-effective backup and replication to ensure that data is stored outside of your network and available not only when you need it, but how you need it. So maybe you have workers that work from home, especially right now um, with most of the workforces still being work from home and networking and everything being much different than it looked 12 months ago. Our solutions work hand in hand to make sure that that data is available, not just when you need it, but also how you need it to those who need it most. We also have infrastructure as a service, which provides the ability to host production data or select workloads in our data centers on hardware that we provide, or you can also bring your own. Our infrastructure as a service also extends out to Azure and AWS. And then lastly, we have managed services and user support. 
Our managed services and end user support can be standalone um, or wrapped around any of our offerings that you see here and that we talk about today so that you can be as hands-on or hands-off as you need to be to meet the needs of your organizations. So whether that's help here and there or where your tier one go to um, for backups, DRs, having that helpful hand in the event of a failover or even just testing, um, we're there to help you. So now there's probably more than one of you out there who are thinking, I know I need to back up my AWS or Azure environment, but can I still keep my data within AWS or Azure? Yes, the answer is yes. Comport Secure, as I mentioned, is a managed AWS and Azure service provider. So while we encourage you to keep your eggs in multiple baskets, as Eric mentioned, we also understand the need or desire for one cloud, and we work with organizations to support that as well as manage that so that your team doesn't have to master the AWS and Azure technology. All of the same functionalities we talked about today are available if you choose to keep the data within AWS or Azure, and our teams are still available to help you to work with you and hold your hand along the way to make sure that the solutions are implemented to the best um, that they can be to protect that data. So now let's dive into the first topic of bulletproof backups, which is how to lower your public cloud TCO. We talk to many companies who implement AWS or Azure, and after six months to a year, the bills grow. You hear it all the time if you're reading um, blogs or forums out there that some cases they can seem to even get out of control. So maybe an increase here in resources or a bump in storage there ran away with you, and now the cloud is more costly than you imagined it would be. It seemed simple at first, only pay for what you need, um, but then it kind of got away from you. There are a few ways in which Comport and Veeam work together to reduce excess cost and streamline data operations within AWS and Azure so that you can see that ROI on your cloud investment that you were planning on. First, we focus on reducing the manual effort and time to manage data backups. This is a key, key aspect of it. Maybe some of you have employees who are working all day, every day, just to manage your AWS or Azure environment and making sure data is being taken care of properly. It can be a big cost buildup for a company. And then secondly, we reduce the storage and we also can actually completely eliminate the restore cost associated with restoring data in the event of a disaster or maybe something was deleted and now you need it back into that AWS or Azure environment. And then lastly, we really work hard with you to make sure you're only backing up the data you need and to the correct target that best fits the use case for that data. Not all data is created equal. We're very strong believers in that and therefore we cannot put all of your data into the same operational flows, management profiles, maybe some data needs to be stored for different periods of time and to meet different compliance needs. We understand that and our goal is to work with you on that. Tom, can you elaborate more on how Veeam technically achieves these? Sure, thanks Hannah. So when we specifically talk about the integration of Veeam and layer Veeam on top of backing up these workloads, whether they be in the public cloud or offsite in a uh, private cloud, we have to think about how are we going to automate this process? How are we going to make it the most efficient way without the manual intervention? Well, Veeam allows you to do that with an automatic startup schedule, uh, giving you the ability to determine how often and when you want to back up uh, these servers. Uh, we can do backup at a specific start time, so you can schedule the backup job to start at a specific time daily on a specific, maybe just weekdays or monthly on a select day. Maybe it needs to be backed up on specific intervals. Uh, that can be done in minutes or hours. So, you know, every day or every two hours, I want to do a backup or every 120 minutes. Um, we also have the ability for this to run continuously. Uh, you've determined that you have an RPO or an RTO and you want to make sure that you, any highly transactional servers, you want to make sure that you have a continuous backup of that. So essentially you could schedule the job to run continuously. It's a non-stop matter. So once it's finished, it's going to continue to back up. The other thing that's very important uh, when we talk about this is how are we going to get the data that we need? So within Veeam, you have the ability uh, from a data restore perspective, uh, we can perform volume level restores to recover the entire system image of a specific computer or maybe just file level restores. So with the volume level restore, 
uh, if the data on the computer gets corrupt, you can restore this volume from the backup. Maybe you deleted a file or a specific folder. With the file level restore, you know, if you lost that or modified a file, you can just recover that specific file. Now, when you think about backing that data up to Comport Secure, Comport Secure, um, where some of the advantages start to come into play are those ingress and egress fees. Um, you're not going to worry uh, because with Comport, they take that into account. And then when we think about if we do a good strategy and we're only backing up the data that we need and we're doing that very efficiently, of course, it's going to save us time uh, as well as money. So it's real important to have a good strategy going into this from that standpoint. And uh, as you can see, well, if we implement them, we're in good shape. Turn it back over to Hannah. Great, thanks, Sean. So now on to security. What does your security team think? If they're really great at their jobs like most, there are questions and concerns and we run into those daily. Do we need another cloud? Who has access to the data once it leaves Azure or AWS? Is it encrypted? All valid and important questions. Our team's goal is to work with you to develop a strategy, manage the pieces of that strategy in the puzzle that could expose your organization and help your security team feel confident. One of the ways that we do that is by ensuring your data is always in the safest location physically and virtually. Our tier is being secure customers' data. I'll just jump in here to the second point. Oh, sorry. Sorry about that, Hannah, right here. <laughs> My apologies. Um, so data encryption works uh, at the at the job backup level. Um, the Veeam um, agent uses block cipher encryption algorithm, and that encryption works uh, at the source side of of the of the data. Um, it basically to create an encrypted backup, you must enable the backup file encryption option and specify a password that will be used for data encryption. Now, if we take a little bit uh, closer look at this, we can see in the next slide on the diagram that the data encryption is performed as part of the process. Encryption works on the source side before data is transported to the target location. And as a result, encryption keys are not passed to the target side, which helps to avoid any data interception. The encryption process includes the steps that you see here on the screen. They're also identified uh, by the color-coded keys on the bottom, so you can sort of follow along as I describe. When you create a backup job, you enable the encryption option for the job and enter a password to protect the data at the job level. Veeam Agent for Microsoft Windows generates a user key based on the entered password. When you start the encrypted job, Veeam creates a storage key and stores that key to its database. Once the session key and the metadata key are created, Veeam processes job data in the following way. A session key encrypts data blocks in the backup file. The meta key encrypts backup metadata. The storage key encrypts the session key and the meta key. The user key encrypts the storage key. And that's how Veeam does its encryption for backing this data up. Now let's just talk a little bit about how the backup works. During backup, Veeam Agent for Microsoft Windows performs the following operations, as you can see demonstrated on this slide. Veeam creates a Microsoft volume shadow snapshot of the volume whose data you want to back up. The VSS, for short, snapshot helps make sure that the data on the volume is consistent and does not change at the moment of the backup. So when it does that freeze, it takes that snapshot to make sure nothing changes. Veeam reads data from the created VSS snapshot, compresses it, and copies it to the target location. During an incremental backup, Veeam uses change block tracking, or CBT for short, to retrieve only those data blocks that have changed since the last backup session. In the target location, Veeam stores copied data to the backup file. If you have a highly transactional database type, such as a SQL or an Oracle, such as those types of backups, we're going to, to maintain database consistency, uh, Veeam Agent automatically truncates transaction logs upon successful backup. So from a um, encryption standpoint, we're going to secure that data and we're going to make the backup process very simple and easy to use. Now, let's talk a little bit about how this works and take a look from the standpoint of what it's going to look like from this standpoint. Let's log into the actual portal itself.
And as you can see, I'm logged into the Veeam management portal. And up here, let's just talk about how we could actually create a backup job for one of these workloads running in Microsoft Azure or AWS. You can select the Windows computer in this case, and it's gonna give me the option. In this case, it's gonna be a server. We have two um, ways of managing this. We can manage it by the agent or we can manage it by the backup server. And you can see those two descriptions. We would give this a name for the backup job as well as a description. We would select the computers that we wanna back up. We could do individual computers or protected groups. We could protect a group and we would hit next. Here's where we can actually select the backup mode. Do we wanna back up the entire computer, volume level or file level? In this case, we're gonna stick with the entire computer. Now this is where we can configure this backup. First, we're gonna select the repository. In this case, we would select the Cloud Connect repository. This would be something like Comport Secure. We can set our retention, the default is seven. We can do restore points in restore points or days. So if you wanted to say I want 14 days of restores, or if you wanted to say I want 14 restore points because you could have multiple restore points in a day. We could keep certain full backups longer if we wanted to do something like a uh, GFS type retention, grandfather, father, son. So if we needed to keep X number of weeklies, maybe we needed 52 weeklies, 12 monthlies, and one yearly, we could do that for long-term data retention if needed. Uh, we also have the ability to uh, set up other things within our backups. Do we want to create a synthetic full backup periodically? And what day do we want that to happen? From a maintenance perspective, um, some of these things are already predefined for you, but we can do a health check on the last Friday of every month. If we needed to do anything with storage, we usually these are going to be set to the defaults based on recommendations, uh, based on Veeam best practices. Of course, we can get notifications. So if we want to have an email sent, if this job ever fails or it is successful, we have the ability to select and choose. And then if we needed to run any pre and uh, post scripts, if for some reason, uh, the server we're backing up has an older version of our Windows on it and uh, it's not gonna support VSS from that standpoint. We'll keep these to the default and uh, we'll go to the next. From a guest processing standpoint, uh, if we need to enable application aware processing or guest file system indexing, uh, just in case we have any highly transactional databases, we wanna make sure that we're gonna be backing up the transaction logs um, and that sort of thing so we can do point in time recoveries. We have the ability to do that as well. And then of course, we wanna pick our schedule. Um, to make it automated and to stick with the theme here, you know, making it as easy as possible, because obviously in the business continuity disaster recovery world, we're only as good as our last backup. Uh, we can pick to choose this, and we went through these a little bit quick during our PowerPoint presentation, but here you have daily at this particular time, so we can do every day at 10 o'clock. If you wanted to, uh, we can pick on weekdays or on these particular days, and then we have the ability to select the days that we wanna have the job run monthly at this time, periodically every so many hours, or if you wanna have it run after another job runs, you can do that. The default is we'll try three times if for some reason there's issue and it'll wait 10 minutes between each. If for some reason there's a block of network time that we wanna not run a job, we could do that as well. And eventually we'll get to the point here where we have our summary. And if we wanted to run this job, we would basically run the job when finished. Now, that's how we'd back up the data and the information. How would we actually retrieve data or information if we needed to? We would simply go to restore. And in this case, we would go to agent because it's being backed up by an agent. And we could pick and choose how we want to do a restore. We can do an entire machine restore. And then we have options here. So we could do an instant recovery to a Microsoft Hyper-V or a VMware. So maybe we want to recover uh, this particular server that's up in Azure, we wanna recover it to Comport Secure and use some of their infrastructure as a service. We could do that. With Instant VM Recovery, we're going to basically spin up a machine in less than a minute, and it's gonna be running on, uh, you know, the running off the storage in Comport Secure, but we'll be able to get it up in a matter of moments. Or we could restore it to another EC2 instance or an instance in Azure. So for this case, we'll just pick one of these so you can see what it looks like to go through. We can pick the machines that we wanna to add to here. 
we'll just pick a machine, we'd add it. We can then select the destination. Once it comes up, we would pick the name of the host. We would pick, uh, we could pick a machine or a location that we want to do that to. Once it opens up, and then we would be able to select the data store that we want to pick from. So we could pick a point in time, whether it be the most recent backup or a specific file, we would give it a reason as far as the reason that the reason that we want or why we're backing this up. And then again, we would get a summary and we'll be able to determine um, exactly if everything is the way we want it and how we want to move forward from that standpoint. So we would be able to do that very quickly and very easily. And then we would be able to actually have that server up and running, recover it. We could either then move it into production or we could fail back to the original server uh, in the public cloud. But as you can see, it's very simple, easy, menu-driven process to set up your backups as well as recover your backups. I'll turn it back over to Hannah so we can move along with our presentation. Great, thanks, Sean. Let me just make sure that everyone can see my screen. Yep. Great demo, Sean. Thank you. Now that you've seen how easy it is to set up the backups to a Comfort Secure data center, let's recap. Veeam and Comfort Secure's AWS and Azure Backup as a Service protects against accidental deletion, malicious threats, both internal and external, and provides flexible retention policies for you to manage data to both your organizational needs as well as industry compliance needs. So all of those options that you just saw in creating those jobs and restoring, they can be applied to as many data sets as you'd like, um, so that not every single backup job has to have the same policies. Well, I think, Sean, that it's safe to say that after the past two webinars that Veeam and Comport Secure focused on, that our data protection for any app, any data, and in any cloud is pretty evident. The flexibility that we have to meet the current needs and the growing needs are able to be carried out within a certain part of the customer's environment or your entire environment, all while being 100% delivered and managed if you choose to by Comport Secure. Definitely, Hannah. And as you can see, when you work together with Veeam and Comport, you become stronger. You'll be able to have the confidence that you need, that your backups will be available, and that you will be able to recover if, in fact, you need to. Yeah. Awesome. So I think that um, that brings us to the last part here is what can you do next? So feel free to get under the hood. The Veeam software and Comport Secure Backup as a Service solution for Azure and AWS is available for 30 days. It's a guided POC where we install the software and we really allow you to cater that to your needs. Be able to customize that for the data sets that you'd like to back up, allow you to test recovery, and allow you to see how that solution would work if you were to have that running in your um, organization today. Um, another important thing that I want to point out is the unlimited um, restores that are available so that in the event that you are currently backing up within AWS and Azure, it might be interesting um, to go back and look and see how much of that data have you had to restore um, since you've implemented AWS and Azure for your organization. And we'd love to talk to you about that. The 10 Amazon and 10 Azure now instances are free. So if you wanted to um, get a head start on that and see how that would work for up to 10 instances. If you go to the cloud store, whether you do it through your partner or you do it through the internet directly, just feel free to download those 10. They are free um, forever. So it's a great option that Veeam allows you to do for part of your environment or all of it. If you happen to be under 10 and you're a small business, uh, it's a great opportunity to take advantage of that. Let's see here if we've got any questions, Sean, and I'll read those off. And if it's for Comport Secure, um, I'll answer those. And if it's for Veeam, I will let you take my Sure. So let's see here. We've got, thanks for the great content. You are welcome. Thank you for coming today. We've got, can I still pay month to month 
and do I pay AWS for the backups? Um, I can take that one. Um, we have month to month um, billing options. We also have some customers who still prefer to pay for 12 months, 36 months up front, so we can be flexible on the billing options. Um, and no, you would not pay AWS for your backups. You would pay Comport Secure. So that is a Comport Secure solution if you have an existing AWS bill or Azure. Um, bill that you would like to look at trying to consolidate um, as much as possible, we can definitely be flexible and work with you on that. What else do we have here? Um, can I change backup jobs? Can I change backup jobs if I add more workloads to Azure? Sean, you want to take this one? Yeah, sure. You, yes, yeah, sure. You can always um, edit, change, add uh, backup jobs uh, based on uh, the, how they're configured, you can add additional servers. Uh, depending on how you have your servers set up, you can group servers together so that if you add a particular server to a particular group, it'll automatically add that to the backup job. So it just all depends on how you have it set up and you know how you want to configure it, but we can kind of make that a little bit more automated uh, based on the way you group the servers together. And then if you add a server to that particular group, it'll automatically do that backup. So the answer is yes, definitely. Awesome. Okay. Well, we are only a few minutes over here on our 30-minute webinar, part two of our three-part series. And we do have a third one coming up, and that's going to be centered all around data centers and the security that comes with our data centers. So we touched briefly on that earlier, um, but it's going to take a deep dive into the data centers so that you can get a virtual tour and see what makes Tier 5 data centers um, head and shoulders above the rest of the options that are out there for data storage. So thank you, everyone, for coming today. Thanks for the questions and for engaging. Um, like I said, feel free to reach out if you want to test the solution. We're here to help. And our information for emails is on the screen. We'll leave this up for a few minutes. Thanks for coming. Enjoy your beverages and have a great rest of the afternoon. Sean for presenting. Have a great afternoon, guys. Thank you.